Hello and welcome. It's an exciting day in the stamping world. It is the beginning of Stamp Timber over at Simon Says Stamp. This is a big month for our hobby. We get to see lots of great new products along with tons of inspiration and collaborations with many of our favorite companies. So I am starting out today by sharing with you a close look at the Stamp Timber Simon Says Stamp release. At the beginning of the month, they release their brand of products. And then throughout the month, they release their collaborations with other companies. And there's a lot of other fun going on. I encourage you to check it out. I'll provide some links below. But instead of just showing you the new products today, I will be sharing ideas and links to techniques that you can do with the different products. I think it's a, a more helpful way to get a closer look at everything and decide if you wanted to try any of their products or try these techniques with products you already have. In the description below, I will have a link to the product followed by a link to the video with the technique I recommend for that product. So I'm hoping that's helpful to you. I'll start out by doing stencils, dies, stamps, then we'll go into some of the theme products like uh, holidays, and then there's some unique products at the end. So stay tuned for that because I think you'll think they're fun too. And one last thing, I do have a couple videos coming up where I use these products with various techniques. So keep an eye out for that too. Okay, let's dive in. I'm starting with stencils first because I really like the stencils in this release. The first three are larger stencils that work well for regular cards or the newly popular slimline cards, which are tall and narrow. Now I'll be using these for a new technique in a video tomorrow, so you can see that soon. And the fact that they're bigger is beneficial for the technique that I do. Okay, the first one is floating leaves. This is a really fun one. This will be great for all kinds of techniques because of the large open area in the pattern. You can stamp over it, you can ink over it, lots of things. A technique that would be fun for this is to create a distress ink or distress oxide ink background, lay your stencil on it, then a baby wipe on top and run it back and forth through your die cut machine. It creates a softened look in the openings of the stencil. See the card there to the right? That's a card that I did with that technique, so you can see the effect that you get. I will link to that particular video below, so you can go watch that technique and apply it to the stencil if you decide to get it. So that's how I'll do this throughout the video. Okay, next we have large falling snow. This works great for slimline cards, vertical or horizontal regular cards. You could even do it upside down to create bubbles for an underwater scene. A fun idea for this stencil would be to apply embossing paste or glaze or something over the stencil. And then while that's wet, add embossing powder like I did on the dot background of this card example. You could do white fluff embossing powder or white glitter embossing powder for a snow effect. And then it adds dimension too. Again, all of these links to the example videos that I share are below. Okay, next up is bubble wrap. I really like this one. And in the video that I have coming up, I use this quite a bit because it's so much fun. Now this one would be great for an offset stenciling technique, which you've seen me do many times in videos. You first ink it up with white pigment ink. Then you shift the stencil and ink it up with a colored dye ink. And you get this offset optical illusion effect like you see on the example there on the right. It would work great for the circles on this bubble wrap stencil. I'm also really excited about the Autumn Splendor stencil, which I'll also be using. This has a lot of detail to it, which is really fun with stencils. A technique that would be great with this is a glitter stencil technique, where you start with cardstock covered with double-sided adhesive. You lay your stencil on it, apply one color glitter, remove your stencil, and apply another color glitter, and you get that two-tone glitter background, as you can see in the example here. That would be gorgeous in like gold and rust color glitter with the Autumn Splendor stencil. Next we have the Deco Square stencil. This would be fun to do as kind of unique looking rainbows if you rotated it and just color in each with a different color. Or it would be great to use with a rotating stencil technique like I did on the example here. Basically you ink it up with white pigment ink, rotate it 180 degrees and ink it up with a dye ink and create a different pattern that gives a really neat background look. Another stencil that I'm excited about is actually this set of three called the Simple Pattern Trios. What's neat about these is the stencil size is four and a quarter by five and a half. 
So you put it onto your note card and then you can ink over that area and you know your pattern is centered on the front of the card. So there is the diagonal stripes, there's the horizontal stripes, which you could stamp sentiments into if you wanted to, and then there's the dot pattern, which I'll be using in my next video. It would also be fun to use ribbon to put a bow at the top of one of these little inked boxes and then put a bow down the center of it and it'll look like a wrapped package on the front of your card and all you have to do is add a stamped greeting. Next we have dies. I'm really excited about dies. I love die cutting, but what's best about these dies is there are many that would be great as a detailed die cut on the front of a fun inked background. So it creates a quick card. A good example is the engraved feather die. By the way, this piece of blue cardstock that I show along with these die cuts is four and a quarter by five and a half, so you can get an idea of the sizing on a typical note card. For the detail of this feather, I think it'd be fun to do a die cut that's covered with gold embossing powder. Here's an example on the right there of a leaf with some gold embossing powder on it. It would be fun on this feather. And I will link to that video below also. Another very detailed die is the etched eucalyptus wreath. And there were eucalyptus leaves that came out in the last release. I like the detail of this. I think it'd be fun to do a background of these overlapping rings of leaves. Or you could just simply die cut it from a specialty cardstock, like a silver holographic cardstock, like I did on the example here to the right. And you can see how that die cut would match nicely with this wreath. I also am crazy about the etched laurel leaves. There are two dies in the set. Look at the detail on those. I like that one is large and one is smaller. You can cover a background easily or the two pair together nicely. This would be fun to do an impression. So here's an example. I took the die, I dabbed the cutting edge with Versamark ink, laid it onto cardstock, ran it through my die cut machine to make an impression with an embossing mat, and then added gold embossing powder. It gives great detail. It's a fun technique to try, so be sure to check out that video below. We also have the detail elm leaves, so there's two dies in this. This has a little more of a playful look, and you'll see me use it in tomorrow's video. I like that it has the detail with the rounded leaves. They're smaller so that you could make a smaller focal point or cover a background with them. This would be really fun with the faux letterpress technique. Now it's kind of hard to describe the technique here, but you can see how I made an impression with the leaf dies there and then put ink in that. And it would work great with the detail elm leaves because you would have that dotted detail. It's hard to explain the technique, so be sure to watch that video. It would work great with these leaves and the other leaf dies that I share today. Here are the tender leaves. It's just another variation. All of these leaves would work really well together, but I like that this one would be great if you have a die cut flower or a stamped flower. These would be great leaves to kind of tuck behind them and come out, or it would be fun to do with a bridge card technique. So you die cut a bunch of these leaves and glue them across a bridge card, kind of like the happy birthday here is suspended. You could have leaves suspended across there and then put a sentiment in the middle. Now I was jumping up and down when I saw this detailed ringlet plate, and that's the truth. I do get giddy about new fun stamping products. So this creates a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. It cuts the outside edge, but everything else is just detailed dots. So you can use it for a subtle pattern on a card like I did here. This is a split gatefold card design, and I'll be using this several times in my next video. Another idea for this plate would be to die cut it from several pieces of cardstock and then cut out the circle patterns and then pop out colors of the pattern on a white background. Here we have two die sets, the Geometric Builder Squares and Circles. Now the square sets come with the four squares in the middle up there and on the left, and then the circles come with the square on the bottom. Now these are great for any of you like me who like to hoard scraps of cardstock, specialty papers, or leftover background inky pieces that you have. What you do is die cut from these and you can build fun patterns, geometric patterns, to fill your card front. I am really excited about these. I'll do a video where I show different styles that you can do with these. But if you like to use up those scraps and don't let them go to waste, these are two sets that you might want to consider. 
Let's now dive into the sentiment dies. I use those a lot on cards. The first one is you matter. You have the die and the shadow die. Now, I don't know that there is a better sentiment to send to somebody right now. I know a lot of us are discouraged, and I think this would really do a lot to encourage someone. Basically, all you have to do is add it to any card or a fun, bold background, like my example there to the right, and it's sure to cheer someone up. It also teams nicely with the stamp set that I'll show you later in this video. For a unique sentiment for a celebration card, here we have best day ever. We have the script die and then also the shadow die. Again, I'm showing it on a basic card size so you can see how this fits nicely in the middle. This would be great for a large colorful shaker window. Here's an example where I did strips or scraps of cardstock along a background and created a large shaker window on front of it and then put a die cut on the window. And the best day ever would look great there too. Another die set that would work great for that technique of a shaker window is the happy birthday script, which again includes the script word and the shadow, which I think is always beneficial. It allows those detailed sentiments to stand out more. Then we have sending smiles words. This I believe was part of a kit last month and now you can buy it individually. I can't wait to use this. I think it's such a happy, playful sentiment, and it fits nicely on a landscape or horizontal card also. And by the way, I just thought I'd show you, it does also match up with the Just Miss You stamp set, which was part of a kit also that you can buy separately too. Lots of wonderful sentiments in there, especially for right now when we're missing a lot of people who we can't see. All right, there are two die sets that I am really excited about for the upcoming season. This is the box and ribbon gift wrap die set. So it creates this folded card with two little notches on the inside to hold a gift card. Then there are also dies to create a ribbon on the front. Now I just did this from white cardstock for a demonstration. Of course you do some colorful cardstock to make it look pretty or glitter cardstock, but look how fast this comes together. And it looks like a little gift box, but it opens up to hold a gift card in the inside. And the best part is when it's closed, it's four and a quarter by five and a half, including the ribbon at the top. So it fits it into an envelope easily. This will be excellent for teacher gifts or anytime you give a gift card to someone. So quick and easy card and you can decorate it however you want. Another fun one is the Latte Gift Card Slider Die Set. You can use this in many different ways and I'll show you the way that I plan to use it to make cards for teachers. So I die cut two of the mug die cuts and then I just put glue behind the handle and along the outside edge, but not across the top. This creates a little pocket where you can put a slider into it and that's the piece that has a whipped cream on top. So you can make this look like hot chocolate. You can see the sprinkles dies over there. There's a little cinnamon stick. There are many ways you can arrange this. Now here I'm using the latte slider part. And then I also have the gift card slot part of the die set. And I'm putting those together and running it through my die cut machine. I will then also cut a piece without the gift card slider slot. So you can either use it like this, where I just slide in this so you can see the gift card peeking out. And that would be a fun, quick, easy card. Of course, you'd make it colorful and pretty. Or you can make this little sliding part into a card. The way I would do that is to put a score line at the top up there on the whipped cream. So about a half inch from the top. Above that score line, I'll put adhesive and then I'll glue it onto another die cut that doesn't have the gift card on it. So basically this is a mini card with the gift card in the inside and you can slide this into the slot on the mug and there you have a fun interactive card. This again is great anytime you want to give a quick Starbucks card to somebody or just any kind of gift card during the fall or winter season. The fact that it comes together quickly is a big win for me because I make a lot of teacher cards with small gift cards inside. Next, there are several slimline die sets in this release. This is the slimline keep marquee. This is fun because inside of the cutting edge of those rectangles are little open dots. So you can do fun stitching with that if you wanted to. These are approximately eight and a quarter inches wide and three and a quarter inches tall, which is great for those tall and narrow cards, but you can also use them creatively on regular cards. 
Here's an example that I used a slimline die uh, to create a little banner on the front of my card. See that scallop border edge? That's actually a slimline die, and so you can use those on regular size cards too. Another is the slimline scallop frame die set, about the same size for that outer die. And then this one cuts the happy birthday banner. And then we have the slimline borders and edges. These are each individual border dies. These are great because they go across a slimline card, but they can also go diagonally on a regular card. Some border dies are a little too small for that, so I like that option too. Great way to create unique strips from scraps to add to the background of your cards. Next is the nested oval dies. So these cut apart so you can have individual ovals. This, these get really big, so it'd be great even for those of you who make five by seven cards. You can also keep them connected or tape them together to create concentric ovals to create a background like the one you see there to the right. And again, all the pictures I share, I do provide the link below to the video right next to the product that I talk about it with. All right, next we have background stamps and there's some fun ones in this release. The first one is the lantern pattern. It's a beautiful detailed background stamp. There are a billion ways you can use this, but the one that I think would be most fun is to white heat emboss it on cardstock, on white cardstock. Then just add some shimmer powder and water and let it dry and do its own work. And you get pools of color in the detail, like the example you see here. A lot of the background stamps that have little pockets of detail are great for those products. Another with a lot of detail is the Deco Squares background stamp. Now this would be fun for a framed stamping technique. So for this example, I stamped a bunch of flowers masked there in the center and put a frame around it. And then I masked that center area and stamped with a light ink with a detailed stamp. And the deco squares would be great for that. This is a one layer smooth card. So with the help of masking, you can use detailed stamps like that. Next we have the hexagon tile background stamp. Now when I first looked at this, I see little hexagons in the pattern. So what I would do is stamp this on several colors of cardstock and then cut out the hexagon from the different colors and then build them back together like a puzzle to create a colorful hexagon background. Now the fractured background stamp, this would be fun to just stamp on white cardstock in a color, rotate it and do a different color and continue to do that to create this overlap colorful background. Or you could white heat emboss it on watercolor paper, apply a bunch of distress ink, and then spray with a shimmer water and create pockets of color like you see in the example here. It would create a fun, bold background for a simple sentiment on top. Here we have the Circle Patterns background stamp. This would be great for offset stamping, where you first stamp it with like a white pigment ink on a craft cardstock, and then you move it a little bit over and stamp it with a colorful dye ink to create a fun offset pattern. You could also fill in the little circles with different gems for a fun colorful background. Here we have the damask background stamp. This would be beautiful just tone on tone on a colorful cardstock for a fun background. Or you can try a subtle resist technique, like on the example here to the right. You just stamp it with Versamark ink on white cardstock. Let it dry and then apply distress ink or dye ink over it and you get a subtle resist effect. Here we have the wood planks background stamp. This one, I'll be honest, I think looks so cool when you do a light gray and white cardstock or if you did a gold embossing powder on craft cardstock. It's just a great background stamp for a focal image. Next we have the sunflower background stamp. This is a beautiful one. I think it'd be fun to create a set of note cards. You just take bold colors of cardstock, stamp this with a white pigment ink, and then put a sentiment on it. And do this with different colors and put them together to create a note card set. There's so much detail in the stamp, it should be the highlight or the focal point of the card. Next we have the old letter background stamp. This is a beautiful one that just looks nice tone on tone on the background of any card. But what I think it would be beautiful as is to clear heat emboss it on a dark cardstock and then spray it with different distress oxide inks. That's what I did on the background of this card. It looks so cool. This would even work great with that damask background stamp. 
Okay, now it's time to dive into stamps. I know many of you are probably looking forward to this the most. And then we'll get into themes and other fun products. Okay, here we have my favorite stamp set from this release, and that is the Paper Hug stamp set. This is a large set, so we have big images. If you're like me and you're missing many people during these tough times, this set is for you. You can use it on cards, but I also think it's great for stamping on envelopes. You could also make a bookmark card using one of those images. On the card example here, that square is a piece you slide on your page to keep your spot. And one of those images would look great on a bookmark. And by the way, I'm sorry I'm going through these so quickly. There's just a lot to share, and I wanted to share the ideas too. Next is the Tiny Word Support Stamp Set. I didn't get this one, so I can't show it to you in person, but this does include a lot of encouraging messages that I think we all could use right now. And it would work really well with that You Matter die that I showed you earlier. These tiny word sets that Simon Says Stamp has, I use quite often as like a sub sentiment underneath my die cut sentiment. They're easy to stamp on cardstock strips and add to your card just about anywhere you want. They're also nice for stamping inside of cards. There are tiny word stamp sets in lots of different themes, and this new one is one of those that I think I'll be using quite often because of the encouragement messages. Another great set, this one's six by eight, is a sympathy greeting mix. Many different ways to send a sympathy greeting, but also some that are just encouraging to folks during difficult times or when someone is sick. Like, I've been thinking about you each day, sending you a much needed hug, and sending you healing hugs. So this is one of those you wanna look closely at because there's lots of sentiments offered. I also think this one would be great for creating a sentiment background like the card you see on the right. You just arrange a bunch of them and you can stamp a bunch of backgrounds at once and put any focal point image on it. Here we have XL Greetings. Now this is fun because it fills a card so nicely. So you can create an inked background and stamp or heat emboss the sentiment at the center. There are also coordinating dies available for this set. I think it'd be fun to create a stamped background and then use white pigment ink to do a bit of ink blending in the center to create a highlight point and then put the sentiment at the center of that. So you can see there's a white highlight behind that happy birthday. Would work great with this set too. Because of You is another very meaningful stamp set, so unique. Now this has the Because of You sentiment and then many other sentiments that go with it. And also, you make me a better person. So it's got things like, I feel accepted and loved. The world is a better place. I am a better human. It'd be fun to do one of the large sentiments and then put the smaller ones around it in colorful inks, like the example you see here. It'd be a quick and positive, encouraging card. Another encouragement stamp set is the I am with you. I really like the hand-lettered style of this. It just makes it look even better on a handmade card. And there are unique sentiments such as love you fiercely, you are brave, and I am with you. I think these sentiments would be fun just stamped on a white cardstock die cut and placed on a beautiful stamped background such as the sunflower stamp that I showed you earlier. This allows those sentiments to be the focal point of the card. I was excited to see another CZ Design Clean Line stamp set. This is Clean Line Gratitude. So with this, you can stamp the main large word, and then there are many little sub sentiments that you can use along with the large words, such as I am so grateful, grateful for all you do. And also there are coordinating dies for the hearts and the large words, which makes it very easy to add to your card. I'll be using this in an upcoming video. Next, we have banner greetings. This is a large six by eight set. And the cool thing is there's this transparency that matches up with the banners and it helps you to line the different sentiments on it. Now the sentiments are straight, so you can use them on a card as normal, or you can use this guide, this tool, this transparency to help you give the curve to the sentiment to go on the banners. So here is a quick example of how it works. Say you've stamped that banner there on the bottom on your cardstock. You line up the transparency over the banner, see how it matches up, you line it there, then you take any of the sentiments and curve it onto that transparency. The transparency holds onto the stamp and keeps that curve. So see how I'm curving it to fit into that window opening? Then you take your acrylic block or your stamping tool and you press down to pick up the stamp 
and now you can stamp with it and it's at the perfect arch to go into that banner. So you have the option to stamp it straight or to go along any of the banners in the stamp set. I think it's really cool to have that guide to make sure you get it just right. Next, we have another large stamp set. This is Slimline Greetings. These sentiments, which cover pretty much the whole year, are seven and a half inches long about, so they're great for stamping stretched across a slimline card. I don't have many stamp sentiments that fill the slimline card, so this one's really fun. I also think it'd be fun to stamp like that Happy Halloween or Congratulations in rainbow inking, as I did with the rainbow on the butterfly here. If you've never seen that video, be sure to check it out below. It's a fun way to create a colorful sentiment or large stamp image. Now I use a lot of snowflake images throughout the winter season, not just for my Christmas or holiday cards, but the whole winter. And I really like the um, kind of graphic design of these snowflakes. It would be fun to use along with the distress and water technique I just showed in a recent video. You white heat emboss the images, put a bunch of distress ink or distress oxide ink over the background and then paint in the snowflakes with water and it softens there. Be beautiful on a blue background. Next up is the mix and match circles, another large stamp set. You could do a background of all of these circle images in different color inks or do kind of a um, bokeh effect with this. But what I thought of first was to use it along with my Gina K wreath builder to create a kaleidoscope kind of look like the example that you see here. If you've never seen a wreath builder, it's a great way to use small images. So check out that video. This stamp set also uh, includes small sentiments that fit on circle die cuts, which is fun too. Next, we have Laugh in Flowers stamp set. I like the realistic look of these flowers and it's something different than other floral images I have. There I did a watercolor technique where I put uh, distress inks on an acrylic block, sprayed it with water and then stamped the acrylic block on top of a white heat embossed image, which would be great for this stamp set. If you're like me and like to create backgrounds with stamps that fit together nicely, the Good Vibes stamp set is one to consider. You can stamp that outline diamond and then use the other images to color it in to create a background of any color scheme you want. Okay, now let's talk about holidays and themes. I decided to keep this separate since some of the dyes and stencils and stamps all go together. All right, let's start with Halloween. This is the Boo Crew. It has adorable images for Halloween and some cute sentiments like, all I want is candy and you, no tricks, just treats. I wish I could hocus pocus you here. So this also has coordinating dies available. I don't make many Halloween cards, but when I do, they're usually the cutesy version. So this one's great. Here we have the Halloween people from CZ Designs. I like the little bat and the ghost down there, which will match up with some dies I show you shortly. Then there is the Halloween people die set. Now this is the outline of the words Halloween and then the shadow die too, so they can be used together or separately. Then there is the large outline spooky. So that die cuts spooky in a rectangle shape. And this die would be great to use up some of your scraps. You could use like oranges and blacks and dark grays to create a scrap background and create two cards at once using this die. It's similar to the thanks die that came out a few months ago. There are a few more individual Halloween themed dies. Here we have spooky with the shadow die included. And then the fun ghost die, so it cuts a circle with the ghost. And the bats. I think it'd be fun to cut these from either white glitter cardstock or the bats from black glitter cardstock for a simple card design and a simple sentiment underneath. There's also the batty stencil. This I plan to do on black cardstock and I'll ink up the stencil with like a white pigment ink. Then I'll shift it and ink it up with maybe a black pigment ink and then put glitter embossing powder on it. So you have a background of different looking bats. This brings us into the fall. This is the pumpkin spice sentiment stamp set. I know many people are crazy about pumpkin spice or coffee or hot chocolate, and this set would work for you. I like the little hands holding the cup. Those are unique. And you can create a simple card with that, a little bit of coloring, and a sentiment underneath. 
Okay, now we have holidays. This is Chunky Christmas. It has nice, bold sentiments and then little sentiments that can go underneath. These would be great to be gold heat embossed with a little bit of watercolor inside. Here we have the Circle Sentiments Christmas set. I would die cut a bunch of circles and stamp the different sentiments and circles on them to form ornaments that you can hang from the top of your card. There's even a line stamp on the bottom that you can use for the string to hang it. Then you can do whatever background technique you want with it. I really like the Slimline Scene Builder Christmas. This is a large stamp set and that large image on the right is great for a slimline card. It's hard to find images that stretch along a card. So you could stamp that with white pigment ink on a blue cardstock, then maybe gold heat emboss the tree, and then red heat emboss the little ornaments to go on the tree, and then just put a simple sentiment along the bottom. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. And remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned there's a new product that I'm really excited about from Simon Says Stamp. And these are pre-printed acetate or transparency sheets. They're about four and a quarter by five and a half and they're printed in black. And this is the tumbling leaves set. There are four here. And the neatest thing about these is you can foil them. I use ThermaWeb Deco Foil. This is a Gina K version that has lots of fun sparkle to it. I cut it down to be the size of our transparency, and I use a laminator to do the foiling. I have a piece of folded parchment paper. Inside, I'm putting my transparency with the printed side up. You can see one side has the printing on it. Then I lay my foil on it pretty side up. Then I close the parchment paper, and then I run it through my laminator. It provides heat and pressure, and when you peel it off, check that out. It's flawless. It's so cool. And now you can add this onto a simple background or create a shaker window or a clear card, anything you want to do. I will be demonstrating this in a video coming up very soon. In the meantime, here are a couple of the other uh, transparency sets that are coming out in this release. This one is Thanks and Leaves. So you have a frame with leaves in it. Beautiful when it's foiled with gold foil. Here we have mod trees. I think it'd be fun to uh, foil one of these in silver, one of them in blue or green, and then overlap them offset on a background so you can see you would have even more trees. Then we have the hold my hand and the hands create little hearts. And you can see there are different size hands in the set. Okay, we also have the pre-printed sentiment strips which they've been doing for a long time now. I use them a lot in my videos. The reason I included them here is you can foil these two in the same way. Now they're not transparent, but you can either use these with black and white like here, or you can run foil through and all the black would become whatever your foil is. And I'll demonstrate that in my next video also. So there were some Christmas ones. Here we have Halloween. And they also have something, I think it's new this time. They have some colored pre-printed sentiment strips. So first we have the generic thanks sentiment strips, but then we have the same in a colored cardstock. So in the pack you get all of these different colors. So you could pick one that you can add to your card and have a nice match. You just cut out the different sentiments you want or use a banner die to die cut them. It's a quick way to add a sentiment. Okay, that's it. That's the new Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release. Again, for all the products I showed you, you can find the product name below, and then right below that is the link to the video of a technique that I suggested that would go with that particular product. At the top, I have a visual supply list, if that helps you, and also a link to the entire Simon Says Stamp release. But another thing that might be even more helpful to you is to just head over to my blog, which is on the top right here, and you'll be able to see everything there. I hope that this was helpful in taking a look at this large release, seeing what might work for you and some ideas for using them. I'll see you again soon with another video. Have a wonderful day.